have a message for you that's a little bit unusual in some respects. What I would like today to do is to put you in a time machine and to take you back in time. I think we can do this, and you'll notice that, uh, that is a possibility. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to attend one of the early church services? When the church just was just started. Brand new church, shortly after the day of Pentecost. What would it have been like if we could have gone there then and participated in a worship service? Well, the Bible makes it possible for us to do it. If you'll turn with me to Acts chapter 12, we are allowed to uh, uh, sit back and watch and see an actual prayer meeting in the early church. This was very shortly after Pentecost and the establishment of the church. <clears throat> Acts chapter 12. And it says here, <coughs> it's talking about an issue that had come up in the early church. And it was something that they had not been confronted with before. In verse 1 it says, Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Rise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but he thought he saw a vision. And when they were past the first and second ward, they came unto the iron gate, leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord has sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told Peter, told how Peter stood before the gate. But he said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking, and when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with a hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison. And he said, show, Go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what was become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. Let's bow our heads and ask the Lord to guide us in the message today. Heavenly Father, teach us, instruct us, and guide us over the ages, over the years, back in time to when the church was young and bold. We pray, Lord, that we might be stirred in our own hearts, that we might 
be made aware of the power of prayer and that we might realize that nothing has changed from your viewpoint and from your power, from your caring, from your miraculous abilities. Nothing has changed, but so oftentimes we have changed. Help us, Lord, that we might be able to recover that newness, that freshness that exists in the beginning of the early church. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Now, when we come to this particular part of history, uh, uh, in Acts chapter 12, uh, nearly 10 years had passed since the day of Pentecost. And the church uh, had weathered the storm of persecution from the Jewish leaders, but now the persecution was spreading to the Gentiles, uh, especially to the Romans and their leadership. Uh, and Luke, Luke records some of the persecution that they were undergoing uh, from the authorities in Palestine. And uh, uh, it, didn't, it wasn't coming particularly from the Roman rulers, but from a Jewish king that they had placed over their subjects. So he was, Herod was ruling with the power of Rome and looking for the approval of the Jewish leadership, the scribes, and the Pharisees. And at this time, um, um, Herod had resorted to capital punishment. And he killed James. And uh, then he proceeded to take Peter under arrest as well and put him in prison. Uh, so uh, this persecution of the church uh, showed that uh, the church, right from the very beginning, was a target. A target of Satan and his emissaries. A target from the people of this world. A target from the governments of this world. During the COVID epidemic that we had recently, there was a lot of new things taking place in our society here in North America. Governments were doing things that were unprecedented and they were taking authority over the behavior, the practices of the church, the church of Jesus Christ. To this day, I don't know exactly what was the right reaction for us to take um, as the churches of Christ when they were telling us we had to close our doors and stop having services altogether. Uh, when they were telling us how many could come to our services, how we were to be seated, when they were telling us that we couldn't have anybody singing any spe special music in front of uh, people and so on. Uh, there, there were a lot of rules and regulations that they were coming up with, and nothing was being voted on. And uh, the population as a whole wasn't given much of a say-so the way things that were being handled, and I couldn't help at the time but thinking that uh, this, the real target of this is not the general population, but the Church of Jesus Christ. Amen. I think some precedents have, were set at that time, and they are now in place. So then in the future, the governments know that if they can come up with a valid reason, they can greatly disrupt what we do here in our church and in other churches. They got away with it before, and so they, they begin to think they can. They were kind of flexing their muscles back here in the book of Acts as well, uh, seeing how far they could get. And uh, so the Lord had to intervene and show what, uh, uh, what he was to do and how he was going to handle it. And uh, some of the things are almost comical that we read about here. Uh, it's insensitive, to, but to think about those Roman soldiers that woke up in the morning and Peter wasn't there. Uh, and there was no small stir amongst them what was become of Peter. You talk about an understatement. 
they knew they were under a sentence of death. When a Roman soldier was commanded to keep a prisoner, if that prisoner escaped, their life was immediately forfeit in the place of the prisoner who had gotten away from them. So this was not a small thing. It was a very great understatement to say there was no small stir among the soldiers. I kind of think that God has a sense of humor sometimes when we're reading the scriptures. Amen. And uh, not a ridiculous kind of humor, but uh, some of the things, I, you know, we've been studying in Sunday school about Jonah being swallowed by a whale mm -hmm. or a fish. Uh, you have to admit, that's comical. <laughs> We've been trying to learn some serious Bible principles from it in our class, but uh, also it is very entertaining. It's one of the most popular uh, Sunday school stories that are, we can teach our children, isn't it? It is. You always get your attention with, with this. Uh, but uh, here, here the, here's the situation in the early church. And for the first time, the power of Rome is really being focused and aimed at them. It's not just the Jewish leadership now, scribes and the Pharisees. It is uh, the, the power of Rome is being focused upon the church. And so what was their reaction to this? And I think this is really incredibly important for us to realize today because if the Lord tarries his coming, there's a lot of persecution in the future for us. Yes. Uh, I found out this week that they are, uh, down in the United States, they are uh, trying to get the banks to report when any of the customers buy the, uh, show that they're conservative in their politics by the things that they purchase. Mm -hmm. And so they're looking for particular words, and they're supposed to report it to the government. From the, now, this hasn't been approved yet. I don't know if it's going to come into effect, but they're certainly trying. So uh, things are, are, are going to pace, and we might come to the place where government interference in our uh, the freedom of religion is going to be a thing is going to be a thing of the future. It's going to be something that's readily done, and perhaps plans are always being put into place for it right now. However, what was the reaction of the early churches? What should our reaction be? They went to their knees. That's right. They went to their knees. Um, I'm not going to condemn anybody for the way they handled COVID, other churches, and the decisions they made. I don't know who was right and who was wrong. But um, I think that uh, we should take a lesson from this passage of Scripture. Prayer is a weapon. Amen. Yeah. Prayer. Yeah. Prayer is something that is essential for the survival and the continuance of the church of Jesus Christ. Now, having said that, and looking back into the past from the book of Acts, at the prominent place that it had here, that was their first reaction. And this reaction is not meaningless, helpless, hopeless, ridiculous, or useless. It worked. It worked. It worked so well that even the Christians praying were surprised, weren't they? Have you ever been surprised? Now don't raise your hands. But have you ever been surprised that the Lord has answered a prayer for you? Yeah. Hmm. It happens, doesn't it? Amen. Something that we think there's no way out of it. So, well, I don't know what else to do. I guess I'll pray. But we're not really praying with a whole lot of faith. Um, but uh, don't despair. We're not that much different from the New Testament church. We're not that far away. And uh, God answers prayer, even Amen. though our prayers are not as good as they should be. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. Amen. We have a prayer answering God. It it's is. interesting to notice here that when uh, Peter there is released, they're praying that God 
will release Peter and preserve his life. Mm -hmm. James had already been killed. Now here's Peter in prison, and he's scheduled for the next day to be brought before Herod, mm -hmm. and Herod was going to use him as a political pawn to, to get some uh, success in dealing with the, the Jewish leadership. All right, so it, it, looked, it looked pretty bad. Uh, Peter, I don't know that uh, he really thought anything was going to be different about him than with James. Um, he was he had kind of given himself up to it, had he not? Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, when the angel came in, loosed his bonds, told him to get up, follow him, and took him out, he thought he was seeing a vision. He thought he was dreaming a dream. Don't be too hard on him. That's the way we pray sometimes too, isn't it? Yes. Mm. But, uh, <clears throat> this was the reaction of the early church. And this whole story, they didn't look good, except for that one thing. They were praying. Amen. They prayed. Yes. Now we can have a lot of things wrong in our lives as Christians today, in this day and age. There's so much against our spirituality from every direction. Yes. But we can still pray. Mm -hmm. Do we? Mm -hmm. That's the point. And prayer changes things. Amen. And prayer works. Yeah. And the early church found this out to their surprise. They were so surprised that Rhoda was so excited she couldn't even open the door to let Peter in. Hmm. So, uh, there was great persecution against the church. We shouldn't be surprised when there's persecution against the church today, and I think it's going to get a lot worse in the near future. But, uh, um, here we have Peter in prison. So what do they do? They go to prayer, according to verse <coughs> 5. Uh, they go to prayer. Um, and uh, uh, prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. <coughs> now, don't pat, read over that glibly, quickly, and in a cursory manner and fashion. Take it seriously. Here's the key. This is the key that unlocked the chains that bound Peter in prison. This is the key that opened the prison doors. This is the key that allowed him to get into, through the iron gate into the city. This is the key that kept him alive for many, many years after this, serving the Lord. What is it? Prayer yes. was made. The fact that they prayed, and the fact also, notice, they prayed without ceasing of the church unto God for him. It was the prayer of the church, a body of believers together. Do you understand that the spiritual strength of the church is not to be seen in how new their building is, how big their building is, what the accommodations are like inside their building. Those are all good things. I'm not condemning them. But the spiritual strength of a church is not to be seen in how large their Sunday school is either. Amen. Amen. Or the attendance at the morning Amen. service or the evening service. The spiritual strength of a church can be measured when you look at their prayer meeting. Amen in the middle of the week. Mm -hmm. And the spiritual strength of an individual Christian can be seen in their prayer time also. Prayer has become a lost art with a lot of Christians in the world. I'm not saying they're not saved. I'm not saying they're not going to make it to heaven. Um, I'm not saying they're even terrible people. But this is our hope. This is our help. This is our guideline for knowing God's will as a church, as a family, as individuals. 
We need to go to prayer. Amen. <coughs> we need to be people of prayer. We need to bring our requests to the Lord yes. and leave them there. Amen. Trusting Him that He's going to take care of us. <coughs> so, the prayer of the church. The situation looked hopeless. You know what I think the greatest problem for the church of Jesus Christ? I'm talking about the true church of Jesus Christ in the present day. You know what I think the biggest problem is for them? We don't have a hopeless situation. Mm. I think if we did, we would react with more prayer, more fervent prayer, mm. more zealous prayer. And that's what we need. More than anything else. The church of Jesus Christ. The situation looked hopeless. But that's the exact time when it's a perfect time for God to work. When the situation is hopeless. God gets very little credit uh, when we make a prayer nonchalantly and he answers that prayer. Right? It shouldn't be that way. But he doesn't get the credit that he needs. By the way, whenever we as a church get together and hunt for my wife's glasses, <laughs> I pray. <laughs> and I should be giving God more uh, glory for that because she needs her glasses. Uh, and uh, so, uh, but uh, uh, so far the Lord's always helped us to find them. And... Uh, uh, since she, she had that stroke, she has more and more trouble remembering. And we're always looking for her keys, always looking for her gloves, always looking for her purse, always looking for her glasses, and so on. But uh, I pray when we're looking for the things for her. And uh, the Lord, he answers our prayers. Prayer, is, uh, uh, the need for prayer is, is essential in each of our lives and in our church. The need for prayer. We need to be a prairie, praying people. Yeah. <coughs> it's the main example from the church of Jesus Christ. The church started on the day of Pentecost when they were having a prayer meeting in the upper room. And that's where the church started. And the church started because of the prayers of God's people and the blessing of the Lord. <coughs> so, we need to look at the Church of Jesus Christ today, our church especially, our own personal lives. We need to be looking at the place of prayer, uh, the, especially when the situation starts to look hopeless. When the situation is hopeless, prayer changes things. <coughs> now, case in point, let me use the illustration of Jonah once again. In the Old Testament, we tried to, as we've gone through our studies, uh, get you clearly in mind how terrible the Ninevites were, the Assyrians. They were awful, awful people. Uh, when they caught prisoners, they caught prisoners alive, uh, they would bury them up to their necks in the dirt, and then they would take threshing instruments and attach them to horses and they would ride the horses through these heads sticking up out of the ground. The threshing instruments were heavy beams, and they would put anything sharp they could, stones, um, anything that was sharp, pieces of metal, they put it underneath, and they would drag it over the piles of wheat to separate the wheat, the good grain, from the chaff. But the Assyrians, they would take those uh, the, and attach them to horses, and they would drag them over the heads other enemies that they captured while they were still alive in an absolutely helpless condition. Is that horrible or what? And uh, there was a lot of other things that they did that were really, really terrible indeed. Um, but these people, these people in Nineveh, they were faced with a hopeless situation. Pagans, ungodly, wicked in the extreme. 
And yet, they were saved. Every single one of them. Almost a million people. They were saved. And Jesus in the New Testament says that they're going to rise into judgment and condemn others of their generation because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. <clears throat> so they were faced with a hopeless situation. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be destroyed. And what did they do? Even these ungodly, wicked people figured out an avenue of escape. A way of salvation. They repented and prayed to God for forgiveness. That's the power of prayer. Now, if that power is that valuable in the hearts and lives of these ungodly individuals, how much power is there coming from the lips, the prayers coming from the lips of somebody who's truly saved and seeking God's help, God's will, and God's way for their life? There's power there, folks. Amen. So as we slip back into one of these early prayer meetings of the early church, what made them so successful? What made them turn the world upside down for God? It was this. Amen. Amen. They prayed. They prayed without ceasing. They prayed unto God. It was fervent prayer. Fervent prayer was made. It was prayer that was made without ceasing. Um, it's been said that prayer is not getting man's will done in heaven, but getting God's will done on earth. Amen. And if we can pray with that kind of a, a, a heart, our prayers are going to be effectual. You say, well, pastor, I'm not one of the disciples. You don't have to be. Uh, the people in, in that prayer meeting that day, they were praying for a disciple. <laughs> Get him out of there. Turn him loose. They weren't disciples either. Uh, we don't know a whole lot about them, but we know that they were people of prayer. And this is where uh, the New Testament church today is failing miserably. Uh, so many churches I hear about there's a lot of changes going on in churches today. A lot of changes. And what's their answer to improving their church? It seems like we need a new program. We need to have a new way of conducting the service. Get rid of all the old-fashioned things. We need people to be, come in here because they get a good feeling and we make them enjoy themselves and they're really entertained and this is a really good performance that goes on here. <clears throat> that is not what the Bible teaches. And when we go back to the early church, that's not what they did. Amen. They got together and they prayed. And if we want success, this is what we need to do. We need to be people of prayer. Yeah. We need to pray without ceasing. We need to pray with fervency. And so, look at the problems in your life. Let it be motivation. Look at the difficulties in your family. Let it be a motivation to pray. What's the country like? The government. There is some motivation to pray for God's people. The way things are going in the political realm and the world today, we need to be praying ceaselessly and asking for the power of God. <clears throat> now that brings us to another point when we look at this early prayer reading from the book of Acts. They were praying fervently uh, <clears throat> to the Lord and uh, they were praying without ceasing. But they were lacking something. And we need to see what they were lacking. Let's go back in time, our time machine. Hear them pray, see them pray, know that they were earnest in their prayers, but what was it that was lacking in the prayer meeting 
at that time, faith. When Rhoda went running back in and says, Peter's at the door, what was their reaction? You're nuts. I'm not making this up. This is the early church. They weren't very far removed from the ministry of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit coming in the day of Pentecost. They were still fresh in their minds. And they get in this prayer meeting. And it was right for them to go to prayer. It was right for them to pray ceaselessly. Call upon the name of the Lord to help them. But one thing they lacked. Faith. So. Let's put ourselves in a time machine again. Let's go back there in our own minds and hearts as a church today and let us get that clearly in our minds. Let's do everything that they did except for that. Not believe. When you pray, Jesus said, believe that you shall receive the things you ask for and it shall be done unto you. Isn't that what he said? Before he left this world, isn't that what he told his disciples? Isn't that what he said? When you pray, believe. Believe it's going to happen. Believe it's worth something. Believe it's going to help you. Believe it's going to take place. Believe God is going to answer. An awful lot of the meetings and churches today, worship services and so forth, they get so involved with entertaining one another, wanting to have a good time, you don't even think about faith, having faith in God. And if, if ever, if the church of Jesus Christ has had, there's ever been a time when they need to pray with faith, it's now. And the way the world is, the way the world is going, and the way God, the Bible predicts, it's going to end. We need to be praying with faith. Strong faith. Believing faith. We should not be incredibly surprised when God answers our prayers. That's an insult to him. Do you know that? <laughs> why, why ask if you don't believe? <laughs> Amen. Uh, that's, that's God's attitude. Is it because we don't think he's strong enough? Is it because we don't think he loves us enough? Is, is it because uh, we don't think he cares enough? Is, is it because he doesn't know what to do to help us? Uh, what is it? Well, let's start analyzing ourselves. Let's start thinking in our minds that when we have problems, when we have difficulties, God allows them into our lives many times because we've been ignoring Him. And He wants us to start paying attention to Him. We need to get off our cell phones and we'll turn our computers off for a while. Amen. And get on our knees. And get in contact with a God yes. who's powerful loving, kind, and keeps his promises. So what can we learn from one of the early church prayer meetings? I would love to go back in time and to listen to the Apostle Paul preach. And I don't care if he goes past midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to go back in time and listen to the Lord. I said last week, I, I, like, I just love to... Uh, this morning in the message, I said, I, I just like to hear what the Lord's voice is like. Mm, yeah. I believe that, that the tone of his voice mm. is incredibly wonderful. Amen. Soothing. Amen. I believe that, that the way he speaks to his people oozes his love. Amen. I'm looking forward to someday to actually hear with my ears. <laughs> Lord speak. I'm looking forward to that. But we have this opportunity in the book of Acts to go back in time and to enter into a prayer meeting in the early church. And this doesn't happen very often in the Bible. But here it is for us. And what are these lessons that we can learn from it? Well, uh, something happens when churches pray. Amen. If we are sincere, uh, something's going to happen. And keep in mind, they didn't believe. They didn't believe anything was going to happen. When Peter showed up at the door, nobody, nobody believed it. And that whole group. And that's what they were praying for. Uh, but something happens 
when churches, when God's people get together and pray, things happen. Learn that lesson. And uh, also, we need to learn that uh, we don't have anything to boast about, except that we have a powerful prayer answering God. Amen. Amen. Like I said, we have the biggest church building in town. So what? That's As we right. have the largest attendance, so what? That's As right. we have uh, uh, movie stars coming in attendance, so what? Mm -hmm. uh, are we a people of prayer? Mm -hmm. And uh, are we sincere? Are we going to pray? They used to call it, in years past, praying through. Amen. Remember the old timers? Yeah. They had a really critical problem. They would go to prayer about it, and they called it praying through. They wouldn't stop until God answered. That's a good, good thought to have in mind. We have nothing as a church to boast about. No church has anything to boast about except for a powerful prayer listening and prayer answering God. And when we that happens to us, we need to glorify Him. Let's brag. Let's brag on our God. When we have uh, a prayer time here in our church on Wednesdays, we always ask uh, for your requests and your blessings. And we want to hear about how God is answering prayers and for all of our people Amen. and the needs that they have. And God has answered many prayers in our church. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Not something that we get in the newspaper or on the television's news, but God has answered prayers for us. God has taken care of us many times. When that house right behind us, just, Amen. what, 10 yards away, caught on fire and burned up, and, and we've got a wood building here, and we escaped with, with, with completely. Hallelujah. Ah. Well, you know, we didn't have time. I was praying that day. I was always trying to get all the way already. I was also trying to get you out of here because <laughs> the firemen out there were saying you got to empty the building, and uh, some of you were collecting your and hunting for Daddy's glasses. And, uh, <laughs> and I was trying to come on, come on, we got to get out of here. The whole building could go up at any moment. But uh, I was praying, and not a singe. Amen. God delivered us. Um, um, but we, we, we have nothing to boast about as Christians. Amen. Um, our wealth, our looks, our, uh, our talents, our abilities, nothing to boast about. What we do need to boast about is that we have a powerful prayer answering God. Amen. We need to learn the lesson that to be a mighty church, we have to be a praying church. Amen. We have to be a praying church. And so let's not get hung up on the, how much is in the offering plate, how much we've got in the bank, et cetera, et cetera, how, whether we get in the newspaper or not. Let's, let's, uh, let's be a mighty church because we're a praying church. And uh, let's pray for the other churches. Amen. Uh, I, I think we all need this message. We have a prayer answering God. God's people aren't praying. Not like they should. We also need to notice that prayer does not always change things, but it always changes us. Case in point, Peter was arrested, and he was supposed to be brought before Herod the next day. But we already know, looking back on it, that was never going to happen. That was never going to happen. Um, but when they prayed, it changed them. It changed them. It increased their faith. And down through the ages of time, through the pages of Scripture, it can change us today as well. So let's go to prayer, and then let the prayers change us. Prayers for God. This is why we, we always like to brag on God that he answers our prayers. Uh, I, many of my personal illustrations to you over the years and my sermons 
have been prayers that God has answered. Uh, you know our son Jeff, um, until recently he had a lot of epileptic seizures and we were on the plane home uh, from the mission field over the Atlantic and they had a grand mall epileptic seizure on the plane <clears throat> and uh, we were in a real predicament because in order to medicate him we had to strip him down, cool him off, a plane load of people. And so guess who was praying? Guess who was praying? Oh yes. And uh, the uh, stewardesses, they all chipped in to help out and they got some blankets up and near the cabin, the door, the exit of the plane, put some blankets around so that we could undress him and uh, cool him off and medicate him. And then, uh, <clears throat> and this is the only, the seizures that he had, most epileptics, they had seized for about five to seven minutes and it's over and it's done. Never was that way with him. They have a seizure and it went on and on until he got some medication. Each one would have killed him. There we were, 27,000 feet in the air. And I prayed, and God answered your prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And uh, I've got a powerful God. Amen. I've Amen. Got a prayer answering God. Yes. How about you? Amen. Let's Hallelujah. brag on Him. Let's trust in Him. Let's pray to Him. As I mentioned in the message this morning, uh, God is great, incredibly great, but he wants to spend time with us. Can you imagine that? There are some great people in the world, none of them has ever called call me up the phone and said, I'd like to get together and just talk with you for a while and maybe have a coffee or something. No, that's never happened to me. <laughs> I don't think it's ever going to happen to me, but every day I get a nudge from God come and spend some time with him in prayer. The great God wants to spend time with me. Wow. And you. This is the way it should be between two individuals that love one another. The reason most Christians don't pray is because there's something wrong there with their love for God. Mm. I'm not saying they don't love him at all, but Satan interferes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we turn cold. So let's go get in that time machine and stay in it. Amen. Going back to one of these early prayer meetings of the early church. Now let's learn these important and wonderful lessons that are there for us. God hasn't changed. Amen. The church has. Amen. And not for the better. So let's get back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Let's get back to where it all started. Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Woo, these that have turned the world upside down are come here. <laughs> let's start getting into that business. All right, well, thank you for your time today. I appreciate you listening so carefully, and I trust it was a blessing to you. Amen. <clears throat> let's bow our heads, we'll have a short word of prayer, and then we'll have a closing song. Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that you, as great as you are, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, infinite, eternal, that still you want to spend time with us, individually. And so help us, Lord, that we recognize what a privilege this is, what an honor, to be beckoned to bow the knee before you, and to spend time in sweet fellowship and devotions with you. Help us, Lord, to get back to the beginning of the church so that when you come back at the end of the church age for us, you will find faith on the earth and it will be found in us. In Jesus' name we ask you. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.